Stuck with a small three-element Yagi due to limited space, HOA restrictions, or a nagging XYL? Why not get the most out of what you've got? Hey everyone, Greg Howe, S9 Radio, and thanks for tuning in to part three of this old school three element 11 meter Yagi makeover, where I will be implementing some of the performance enhancing modifications shown in part one of this series. And to get things started, I think it's best that we create a benchmark, a baseline, a reference point. And to do that, I've got my friend Dan with a box stock M103. I have reconfigured my Yagi to the M103 dimensions, and here we go with the on-air test. Uh, yeah. uh, we're doing the test here, G28 on the uh, 103C um, that's not modified. Uh, just uh, bone stock dimensions and also optimized for around channel 30 or so. So this is the test. We do antenna optimized and then uh, message me and we'll get back out here. All right, we'll catch you later. Too. All right, thanks, Dan. And uh, yeah, you're holding right in there to five, got Hawaii coming in. So that was a real good uh, sampling of the M103 dimensions. And with that, I'm going to um, get out there and uh, implement the, uh, the next set of dimensions. Okay, for this next test, I've implemented one of the computer optimized designs I've been working on. They're all still under construction. However, this design showed a fair amount of improvement over the factory box stock M103 dimensions. And here we go. Yeah, you're, um, like I say, whether it's the path uh, has changed or uh, this antenna is really uh, showing me a two uh, S unit difference uh, with these new optimized design uh, dimensions, I don't know. Um, the antenna did grow by four and a half inches. Um, so theoretically, just, you know, lengthening the boom gets you some gain. And it is, um, it is four and a half inches longer than the stock M103. I'll go ahead and send you uh, the optimized dimensions uh, this evening. Uh, but thanks again, Daniel. Okay, so we're estimating maybe a 1.5 dBi improvement. You know, I, it sounds about like what it is. So we'll see if that's just our imagination or if, you know, the um, atmospheric, you know, changes. I mean, we're about 50 miles apart, I said. So it's pretty far distance. So we're, of course, vulnerable to a little bit of you know, more uh, of changes with that type of distance, you know, between us. So, yeah, I, I agree. We should do another test tomorrow morning to double check it. So, I think we'll, uh, we'll do that. Go ahead. Yeah, well, um, I'll have to review the recording from this morning. I don't think I ever saw you come over a S5, and you're constantly S6 to S7 now. So, uh, a noticeable increase in signal strength. Let's hope it's the antenna, but I'll... Uh, just bite my tongue until we can test again tomorrow morning. Yeah, do it so. That's good. That'll be uh, fun. I'm, I'm excited to see. And then I'm extra excited at the end to, uh, you know, do the changes with mine. And uh, we'll compare it once it's raw. And then we'll have two optimized antennas that we'll see. Then we'll really know. I think, that, you know, then we'll see if it improves again. Then, you know, let's say it improved after I did mine. Yet again, and then we can kind of, then that kind of further confirms it's not necessarily just atmospheric. Okay, so there you go. An on air comparison test of the M103 versus the newer computer optimized dimensions all conducted on the same day within an eight hour window. However, in all fairness, I've got to say, I've been on the test range and seen the path loss change within a 15 minute window. So stay tuned. Okay, the solid driven element and gamma match common to most 11 meter Yagi antennas is coming off. I'm going to be replacing it with this split driven element. So let's have a closer look at this split driven element, which is nothing more than a half wave dipole. We've got this beta or hairpin match as it's known, and then the Badger Ballon, which is a four to one impedance matching transformer. It takes a 200 ohm driven element impedance and converts it to the required 50 ohm impedance. And here's how it works. Here's the coaxial input. You'll see the left half of the driven element is direct fed. And then we go through an electrical half wave of coax feeding the right side of the element 180 degrees out of phase. Okay, here's a look at the analyzer readings. As you can see, it's spot on. I've designed it for the center of the 11 meter band. 
27200. And this is just a preliminary uh, reading. I've still got to put the antenna up in the air. When I do that, um, things will change. Okay, here she is, the hot-rotted three-element, 11-meter Yagi with the split-driven element, a Badger Bowen, and then a Beta or a Hairpin Match, as it's known. I'll zoom in for you, give you a better look at it. And then the half-wave phasing cable that runs along the length of the boom. And then you've got Mike Stahl. Founder of M Square Antenna, also a NASA antenna designer. On certain models, he chooses to run the phasing cable down the boom like I do. On others, he has it coiled up at the antenna's feed point. Same as Cushcraft Antenna, whom was also involved with military antenna design. On the earlier models, they had the phasing cable coiled up inside a box at the antenna's feed point, with the latter models running the phasing cable down the boom. I've done it both ways, and from a performance standpoint, I certainly can't tell any difference. And if power handling's not an issue, the smaller cables coil up nicely and make for a real tidy installation, keeping it all right there at the feed point. I'm now running the hot-rotted three-element 11-meter beam with the split-driven element and the Badger Ballon and Hairpin. Take it away, Daniel, Z28. It's all yours. Video is rolling. Okay, Greg. All right, so the important thing to take away is I didn't make any changes on my end. You know, the antenna is the same on my end, pointed the same way, and runs the same power as our previous test that you had the previous recording for. So this is, uh, you know, the main goal is that no, no changes on my end, um, just changes on your end. And uh, same output power and same everything. Pretty much similar time of day, right? In the morning here, we're, you know, in the morning here. So um, we could, um, you could then splice those two uh, videos and you know, and show before and afters and see if you could hear a difference. I'm running the same everything, so um, that's the main thing here in this test. So, uh, Greg, uh, did you copy all that? And uh, go ahead, Daniel. I'm seeing. Um... A couple bars, uh, I hate these darn uh, bar graph meters, but I'm seeing a couple bars improvement over the M103 dimensions. About one bar improvement when we switched from M103 to the optimized, when I switched uh, from the M103 dimensions to the optimized dimensions. And now I'm seeing another bar improvement running the split driven element, the Badger Ballon and the hairpin. Although path loss is something to be considered, the only real way to know, obviously, is a test range. And so I think we need to revisit this test. But all in all, uh, you are much uh, um, audio is clear. Signal to noise ratio is much better. Now let's revisit this test again this weekend if you've got the time or next week and uh, just see if everything stays the same. But there is not a, uh, a little bit of improvement um, over the M103. What I'm hearing right now, there is a vast improvement, but I'm not going to uh, say it's not atmospherics. Um, like I say, a test range is the only way to know for sure. Yeah, copy that. Yep, I think you sound a little better over here, but unfortunately I don't, you know, it sounds good. Uh, remember last time I was able to read you, so it, you really have to compare the videos side by side. I think that's the way to really be able to tell. Here is the 28 on the uh, 103C um, that's not modified. Uh, just a bone stop dimension. So you're probably one to two little, these little bars uh, on this radio. Uh, more and each bar is about one dB because there's about five or six uh, bars per S unit. You know the antenna is the same on my end, pointed the same way, and runs the same power as our previous test that you had the previous recording for. So this is the uh, you know the main goal is that no no changes on my end. Now I want you to take note of my SWR meter on this uh, radio. Uh, we're up on channel 36 right now, and you can see I've got no SWR. On the M103, I had that center tuned for channel 20, and you could see about uh, a 1 to 3 uh, SWR. As they're, you know, they're just a little bit more narrow banded. This is a more broad banded design. I am running the split driven element with the Badger Ballon. So let me, uh, let me shoot you a text in a little bit uh, when I'm all ready to go on my end, and hopefully conditions will still be good. We'll take one more set of readings and I'll uh, do the changes on my end and, uh, and we'll see what we've got. So 
there you have it. The on-air testing of a few variations of the three element Yagi with the results nicely coinciding with the computer data. The additional gain shown in the computer generated plots falls right in line with the real world testing. However, I still desire a third form of validation, that being the test range. So stay tuned for following parts of this series as Dan is going to be implementing some performance modifications to his box stock M103. And then for those of you looking to leap into the world of high performance Yaggies, I'm going to take a deep dive into this split driven element covering the dimensions of the hairpin, the phasing cable, which may vary depending on the type of coax you use, and then some construction tips ensuring you get the most performance and the best longevity, much like this 35-year-old split driven element featured in the video. So with that, I'm going to say 73. Thanks for tuning in and tagging along. Greg Howe, S9 Radio.